officials do know about them is that they are extremely profitable. This is a very lucrative business and uh, they have uh, made substantial amounts of money. As I say, they came from a very mixed background here in Memphis to, to have some, some substantial income. But despite the fact that they make a lot of money and despite the fact that the product they sell is questionable at best. Uh, being a Baptist deacon, I'm very well uh, shocked that uh, someone would, would even attempt to send this through the mail. I could look at this and my own opinion would be, yes, it's obscene. It shocks my modesty. There is not much authorities can do to control them. The company we've been investigating, SHL Enterprises of Memphis, Tennessee, for example, is not licensed to do business in Georgia. Its owners, Ralph and Ernie Lenati, do not pay state taxes, even though it's apparent they are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of business here. Hi, this is easy. I would like you to join my private phone club for $18.99 so you can call me or one of my girlfriends and we'll talk about all kinds of erotic loving. As a result of our findings, investigator Pat Holmes of the Georgia Secretary of State's office sent a letter to the Lenatis last week asking them to register immediately or face possible prosecution. But even so, state officials say manpower shortages and a lack of statutory authority make their job very difficult. A corporation may be excluded from having to register if that corporation solicits or procures orders through the mail or through agents or otherwise. This is a, uh, an exemption that I think that's probably uh, uh, thrown into our face, into the investigative section's face, uh, all of the time. Uh, I think that provision is a thorn in our side as far as enforcement, and that provision needs to either be excluded or modified so that we would have some teeth that we could go after these mail order businesses that have a great deal uh, of contact with the public. You know, you can't protect people from themselves. But on the same, to by the same token, I'd like to say that if a business does, you know, a corporation or an entity does business in this state, they should be in compliance with filing requirements so that the, the citizens of this state will be protected. But smut peddlers like SHL Enterprises aren't the only companies guilty of this. Furniture manufacturers, chemical corporations, thousands of legitimate businesses fail to register as they should. Nobody knows how much tax revenue the state is losing as a result, but some officials say it runs into the millions of dollars. So far, though, efforts to toughen up Georgia's corporation laws haven't received a high priority in the state legislature. Out-of-state companies also do not make very good targets for consumers who have complaints. State Consumer Affairs Director Tim Riles told us, although it's clear SHL's billboard on Piedmont Avenue is misleading, he suggests on matters like this, let the buyer beware. We have a very difficult time dealing with out-of-state corporations. It's one reason that we advise consumers if you're going to uh, anticipate problems and you're going to use the state to help you remedy them, deal with somebody in the state. Then there is the thorny issue of obscenity. We took the material we received from SHL to Fulton County Solicitor Henson McAuliffe for his evaluation. Some of the material that you received in the mail here would probably be in violation of our obscenity laws and particularly this uh, little piece of paper that you have given me because I think this uh, reading material is obscene under the law of the state of Georgia. After seeing what we had uncovered, investigators from the solicitor's office launched an investigation into the Lenati brothers' operation, but even McAuliffe, perhaps the most successful smut fighter around, admits getting a conviction for obscenity will not be easy. The person is apparently in Tennessee rather than being here in Georgia, and if we prefer a criminal charge against them, it means that we're going to have to go through the governor of Georgia and the governor of Tennessee to get extradition papers to bring them back to Georgia for committing a crime in Georgia. I don't think we'd have any problem in, you know, in prosecuting, for example, uh, the person who disseminated this particular uh, uh, sheet of paper. The Lenati's operation has also captured the attention of federal authorities. Atlanta Postal Inspector Dave Kirkland says the office in Memphis has received more than 500 complaints about the Easy Swingers Club. They're coming from all over the United States. Uh, we found that uh, consumers are upset, very upset, about receiving this material that is not what they ordered. It's a misrepresentation of fact. And indeed, uh, the company is actually sending out unordered CODs. That is, the COD comes through the postman, 
the consumer gets the package, they realize, well, if I didn't order it, my spouse did, and at which point they pay for the COD. And then, of course, they are approached with a, a come on to join the organization, and they realize they have been ripped off. Right now, Kirkland says, postal authorities are trying to initiate action against the Lenatis to keep mail from coming into their post office box in Memphis. Once we do that, and I feel like we will be successful, we'll cut off uh, their profits for a time being. And uh, after that, we'll have to look at prosecution under the mail fraud statute. But Kirkland admits the case is still a long way from prosecution, and even if a federal judge agrees to allow postal authorities to cut off the Lenati's mail, there's nothing to prevent them from just getting another post office box.